We're back with the breakfast and plus CV Africa. Uh, many thanks for staying with us. And also joining, we have Okunabong Katarier who joins us this morning uh, for Off the Press. Okunabong, it's good to have you join us. Happy Monday. Uh, I was going to say happy holiday. Good morning. It's the holiday. <laughs> good morning, Nancy. Good morning, Kofi. Miss Sengotari, you, you're looking Nancy. impeccable as always. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, then let's, start, uh, let, let's take a look at the leadership newspaper as we have in front of us. 2023 presidency in supremacy contest for Kano Atiku Tunubu Godeti. That's how the leadership captions it. I won't be a part-time president hibernating in Dubai always. <laughs> the APC flag bearer is quoted to see. Empty Kano Street sign post your defeat, ex-vice president's fire back. We own Kano, you are just fighting in vain, NNPP tells APC and PDP. I'm just wondering what happens with the peace accord that is signed every other time and the fact that, hey, the issue should be issue-based campaign and not, you know, all of these frivolities. Articles picture are missing on Rivers PDP branded vehicles. I saw a couple of them and I'm wondering what could be going on. We're not aware of U.S. security alert to citizens. That's what the police is quoted to say. And so, Kofi, I'm not sure if you saw that, uh, that there was a planned attack uh, in Abuja. And that has seen several emails uh, and all of that. But, of course, the police is saying that they're not in the know. Niger sacks 27 judicial workers for certificate racketeering. And just before we move away, manufacturers lament high interest rate, seek friendly policies. Another says, travel ban, federal government evacuate 542 Nigerians stranded in UAE. Three justices who sat on Namdi Kanu's appeal transferred. NDLEA arrest four kingpins over 16 tons of uh, drugs in uh, Lagos and Abuja. Don't worry, it's not in you know, that particular area where you think of Kofi. But that's the much we can take at this point in time on the leadership. All right, moving on from the leadership, let's quickly go to the punch this morning with the following headlines. FG subsidy spending to hit 11 trillion naira in 2023. Uh, several riders to that. So we'll look at that as if time permits. FG may announce airport concession winners this week. FCT risks attacks as U.S. DHQ allays fears, what Messi was just referring to earlier. Uh, punch investigations, editor wins stop West African journalism price. I think that should be um, the uh, the one that was held in Accra, Ghana uh, this week, or last week rather. 539 stranded Nigerians couldn't get UAE work permits. This is Nema saying that. Kerosene price soars by 118% fuels anxiety. I'm sure they don't intend that pun uh, over there. The Dubai jails Nigerian lady for filming more treatment, family protests. An ex-convict rapes 12-year-old girl, uh, a pupil rather, to death in Ogun. Really sad one there. Away from uh, the punch, we have the Nation newspaper. The Nation says, security alert in Abuja to forestall attacks by bandit. Uh, U.S. United Kingdom issued travel advice. No cause for alarm, says the defense headquarter. But the police is saying they are not in the know. I, I, I don't quite understand. Flood, Lagos begins dredging of canals. And uh, Tunubu's 100 million for Kanu uh, was given. That's what you find right there. And just before we move away from the nation, you find 542 stranded Nigerians evacuated from UAE. Telecom sector contributes $70 billion to economy, says NCC. Investors' apathy threatens 10.78 trillion naira deficit funding. That's the much we can take this morning on the nation. All right. Um, let's go to the Guardian. Uh, uh, cholera cases, a death surge amid nationwide flooding. Cholera cases, deaths surge amid nationwide flooding. So many writers under that. Uh, Kanu anxiety as Supreme Court has FG's appeal today. Youth raise concern over 2023 elections as group offers path for peaceful exercise. And uh, final two uh, from The Guardian. Youth ban politicking in Enugu community over bad roads. Interesting one there. And U.S. raises the alarm over possible attacks 
in Abuja. And I think that is a good way to introduce our guest and uh, into the conversation of Punabo and Kutaria, a public affairs analyst, amongst other things. Mr. Kutaria, what are your thoughts on what the papers are saying? Is a terror alert by the United States issued to its citizens in Nigeria, and in particular in the federal capital territory, Abuja? Um, one of the papers, I think it's the nation, also said that the uh, the, the the punch, sorry, that the military in Nigerian army is allaying fears. What are your thoughts on this? Well, definitely for the United States to have um, issued that warning, it, it has there's some information at its disposal that must have informed the warning. Uh, the Nigerian government will always want to dismiss it or to a very extent uh, try to convince Nigerians that those threats don't exist. In uh, just in the usual manner anyway to tell you that they are on top of the situation as we always say in this country. But the truth is I'll rather defer to the threat, to the warning by the United States because uh, that is one country that does not just talk with our past. So definitely uh, they, they are calling on Nigerians to be very careful and you don't even need the warnings for the United States to know that uh, lives and properties are threatened on a daily basis, if not everyone one minute in this country. Uh, if you, I don't think you can think of any day without one issue of uh, kidnapping, banditry, attack, even by the bandits or terrorists, or the one sponsored by the state, like what you had in the uh, state. When the obedience went on, on the, will I call it a rally or whatever you call it. So the threats are there. You, you don't need anybody to tell you. You don't need any country to remind you that there are threats. But I think what the United States is talking about is not just this normal threat of uh, armed robbery and so on. They are talking of serious threats, like the ones that are being carried out by uh, the bandits, the terrorists, and the kidnappers. Okay, but I'd like you to also respond uh, in that regard, talking about the security alert that's been put out by the United States. The Nigerian police is also saying that they are not aware of it because they were contacted, you know, to respond to what are the plans to curtail all of this. I'd like you to share your thought on this. What does this make I of... Don't, that's, what I, that's what I said. I said, you know, the Nigerian police is, is training ignorance. Or maybe it's probably the new me, but... I doubt if it's uh, a, a, a genuine, if it's the denial is genuine because the Nigerian police, if it really wants to work, is good at its job. That's the point I'm making. Like I said, I said, but this is not one warning that can be dismissed by anybody. If the Nigerian police is not aware of the uh, threat, then no problem. Now they have been told. So they have to ensure uh, to, and they have to be, be sure that and they will do whatever is at their disposal to stay it up, if at all they can. Like I said, the United States, I strongly believe in the veracity of its claims because it is one state that will not just make a statement that it is not quite sure. So if the Nigerian police is saying it is not aware, no problem. Now you have been briefed, you have been told, now you are aware. So uh, you must ensure that whatever the threats are, I think they should also work they, with the informant, that is the United States, also work with the informant to ensure that they gather more facts with a view to staking up whatever threats that are imminent. All right, then. On the punch, oh. the federal government's uh, subsidy spending to hit $11 trillion in 2023. Your thoughts? Yes, $11 trillion in 2023. Uh, it was well, their timeline, but is it before May 29? I don't know. But if, it's, if there is a timeline, <laughs> my daddy's subsidy is just one uh, avenue. It, it, it's one gravy train, an avenue by government functionaries and their cabal to fleece our trade to dry. Uh, the government will stop at nothing. I mean, this is a government that initially dismissed the issue of subsidy, said there was nothing like subsidy, subsidy was a fraud. It came in, it did not just continue with the subsidy, but it has increased the amount, the price. So if you ask me, I think uh, if it's if the 70 trillion, it, this is the last lap. This is the last opportunity for them 
to collect, steal whatever they have to steal from the treasury. And of course, you know, they'll always have a name for it, and that name is the subsidy. I also read that they're talking of uh, turnaround maintenance for the refineries. This turnaround maintenance has been on for years. Not just this government, it predates this government. This government came inherited it, and notwithstanding the promises it made, came inherited it, and we've been having turnaround without the refineries being turned around. So the NNPC, the oil sector, the crude sector is definitely seen as um, a fertile land by government functionaries and their cronies to fleece our treasury dry. There is no sincerity of focus. Even if you talk of the so-called subsidy they are talking about, it just has the microscopic few making a lot of money from it. And that is why you find out that the government is really interested in the issue of subsidy and less interested in the issue of turning around the refinery. All right. Let, let's go over to the nation newspaper. Um, I, I, I'm tempted to start with the um, story on the health of um, uh, uh, Bola Metinubu, um, who is uh, the APC presidential <laughs> candidate. Uh, he says, I'm fit to rule. He's shown that he's really aware of the conversations um, everywhere and the rumors about his health. And of course, um, his opponents have used that uh, to uh, make political gain. But he was speaking as captured by the Nation newspaper at a dinner uh, organized by the uh, Kanu Business uh, Community Council in his honor. And he says, quote, I am more than healthy to lead Nigeria if elected uh, at a February 26 presidential poll, he said. And I think even at his, um, the unveiling of his, his uh, manifesto, um, Renewed Hope 2023, uh, last week, he also asked them, do I look sick to you? What are your thoughts on this, Open Abu Yeah, those are rhetorical questions. I mean, he wasn't expecting an answer, definitely, because uh, Bola Tinebu looks sick. So, uh, but he is in the midst of his uh, supporters and loyalists, and what do you expect? It's like Satan asking his apostles, am I a devil, am I bad? What do you expect the apostles to say? <laughs> they say, oh, you're good, you're the best. In fact, God, God made a mistake by sending you down. So those are rhetorical questions, and uh, he knew definitely that they were going to, the response was going to be positive. That is the truth about it. But the Abola Tinibu is sick. It's not in doubt. Everybody knows that Abola Tinibu is sick. And uh, uh, we all pray for long life. We all pray for recovery. No doubt about that. But we don't want the Yaradu experience or the Buhari experience at all. I don't pray for the Yaradu experience for him. Thank God Buhari is still alive, but we don't want the Buhari experience. You can, I mean, we're all aware of Bola Tinibu constantly traveling out of the country uh, for medical reasons, you know. And what do you have to describe? Why do you see a doctor? And like I said, it's only the sick that needs a physician. Why do you go see a doctor? Is he going to say it's for regular checkup? And checkup, you spend months and months and months over there in the hospital. If you go for checkup, you have to spend up to two days in the hospital. What kind of checkup? So Tinibu is sick. And he is, he is saying it's not about. Uh, about. It's not a wrestling contest. So. Nobody saying it's a wrestling contest. But you know, the office of the president is so taxing and so demanding that you have to be physically and mentally alert. And well, 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 open up, we're, we're, not, we're not in possession of any medical report indicating that he's sick. I mean, if you talk about maybe sickness that everybody has from time to time, you know, um, then, but, but uh, if, brother, if it's something brother, that is um, af affecting his performance, brother, his ability to think and to function, brother, I don't know if you are in possession of his medical let me, let records. Let me put you a response. You say there is no medical report, whatever, isn't it? Okay, now I'm I asking. agree with you. Why will he bring a medical report to you? Are you his son? Are you his doctor? Are you his lawyer? So, so why would you say a medical report? Is it not report? premature you know to conclude that he is sick? Now, let, me, let me put you a response now. Let me respond now. You ask. Now, did you see Yaradu's medical report? Have you ever seen Buhari's medical report? So what are they doing in the office? Is the hospital relaxation center? Is it a creation of the creation center? Why do you keep visiting? Why are you frequent? There has to be a problem for you to frequent the hospital. You don't frequent hospitals, you don't frequent police stations, you don't frequent mortuaries, except there is a need for it. Not a want, a need for it. You know, if you have to go for medical checkups, of course, it should be intermittently. It has to be episodic, not consistently. If you visit consistently, if you are seen at the police station consistently and you are not a lawyer, you are not a policeman, then definitely you have a problem. Even if you are a lawyer, you have a problem. For you to be seen there consistently, which means you are a policeman. Otherwise, you have a problem, but you are working there. If you are seen at the hospital, you have a medical officer, then what are you doing there? 
Even if you have somebody there, you cannot be as you cannot be too consistent. Maybe just for a period, you are visiting a sick patient, a loved one. But in this case, you are always lying. We see pictures in the social media. We see pictures, not once, not twice. So how else do you want any other proof? It's obvious you need any further proof that the man is not uh, physically sound. I'm not saying mentally, I say physically sound. But that will have an effect on the mental state. Because once you are not sound physically, what well, takes it or leave it? You are not even happy. And your concentration will be more, will, more, will be more on your health. And that is why we always see that his, uh, dep sorry, that was that is Tetima, his deputy vice uh, president, like, practically doing everything. Look at well, how, how long, the, how many times did they see the, the uh, uh, inauguration of the PCC? Just because of his health. Let us call it spade a spade. All right, open up on Kataria. You can see, you can see, you can see his hand. Check, check, check it. When he's holding something or when he's talking. Let us call it spade a spade. Oh, oh, open up on Kataria. Let, let's move away uh, from that. I mean, we have a lot of issues that we should talk about. Mm -hmm. But time is not our yeah. friend. But I'd like you to share your thoughts on this one. I mean, the, the leadership captions it as a battle of supremacy uh, for Kanu. Uh, where you have a Tiku and Tunubu going very dirty in terms of, you know, exchange of words. One is saying that uh, I won't be part-time uh, part president hibernating in Dubai as always. Uh, that's the APC flag bearer talking. And empty Kano Street signpost your defeat. That's what, you know, ex-vice president fires back. Uh, what are your thoughts with this? We have a lot of issue, flooding, environmental issues, security, you know, revenue issues. Should this uh, political parties be engaging in, in, in trade of words? Well, the truth about it is that um, I think it should be issue based. The campaign should be issue based. And it shouldn't actually be personalized. But there are times you cannot actually divorce uh, these issues at all. Because if you have another president that is always out of the country, like we have now, the Mr. President, who is always out of the country. All you need to do, like I said on this program before, if uh, uh, the commissioner, a commissioner in Ghana or in Kotonou, if his son is having uh, a, a wedding, where they will want to go, even if he's not invited, you call them to say you must invite me. So we don't want such a president anymore. And probably that's why they say you don't need to, we don't need a president of the in Dubai as what have you. But if I want to ask a question, which is better, a president that will go to Dubai and come back <laughs> and a president that will go to the hospital and remain there, which is better? Op open up, so, but that will uh, be the, a conversation the man for another time. The man that he says, I don't want somebody that will have energy in Dubai. We agree. I also agree with you. We don't want that. We also don't want somebody that will be constantly be visiting the clinics in uh, London and Paris. But then, in, in synopsis, and in, finally, I will ask them to ensure that their campaigns are issue based. Because they, that, and like I said, you cannot completely divorce it. Because if you're constantly traveling, it also affects the resources of our country. Once you're a president, everything you do is being sponsored, taken care of by the country, so it affects. But it should be issue based. We have flooding, we have security challenges, we have poverty, we have all kinds of challenges. So I think what our presidential candidates should do right now is to tell Nigeria how they are going to address this issue. Nobody is really interested in. But, my dear, you cannot, just, like I said, you can't really dismiss it. If you have a sick president, what are right. you going to address the issue? We, if you also have a president that is constantly out of the country, how is you going to address the issue? So that's why I say you cannot completely dismiss them. They are, in, as, in as much as you think that they are insignificant, they are extremely important. Extremely important. Because we all, we've seen a sick president before. One died, one is still in office. We've seen a situation where a president is always out of the country. And we've seen the consequences. We are the result of that. Is Lutonals took advantage of it. Okay. And they messed up the government. Open up, we, have we, we, we have to go. Interesting uh, points you've made. Um, but we don't have, like you, you said, you know, you, from your observation, you're saying the man is ill. But we are saying here we don't have that information yet. So that's your view. Yeah, yeah, totally yeah, your view. I know, the view I know. I know of you know, TV I mean, Africa. I mean, uh, we want to thank you so much for your time. Like I told you, off the air, you. when I come to what I could, I'll nick that hat off you uh, for personal use. Thank and, you so and much. I'll, and I'll, and I'll, take, I'll take your suit and tie. <laughs> All right. Thank you, you so agree? much for your time. Do you agree? <laughs> we'll discuss that later. Thank you very much, <laughs> Oponabongo Tari. And that's the size of uh, off the press for this morning. We'll be back 
uh, after a short break to discuss climate change, but we have a look at what happened today in history.